Children family, children family, what's up, man? You, SCJ here. It's the top of the morning. It's the top of the morning. Listen, I hope everybody is getting ready to get up, get out, and make some things happen this morning. Listen, we got to talk about USC being ranked now in the AP poll number nine. Number nine in the AP poll. And look, we want to talk about some players as well being held account accountable. Also, I want to bring up a, a little bit of a topic. Well, not even a topic, but um, a suggestion. When you're talking about snaps that were uh, 90 snaps over 60 snaps as it relates to Colorado's offense and uh, USC's offense. And we want to talk about that, what that does to a defense. And I want to give you guys a scenario. I want to ask you guys a serious question because when we look at this from a whole, yes, we all talked about Alex Grinch. You guys already know uh, Jay Walk and I, we, we covered this um, yesterday um, in our live. And uh, we talked about this. We went in depth. Um, he gave you his, his views. I gave you my views. Everybody, that's the obvious view. Now, I want to get to another view. And that is, when you're talking about having some snaps, um, 90 snaps, and when you look at the altitude, um, 60 over 60 snaps, which gives the defense 25 more plays to be out on the field. Here's the million-dollar question I have. You guys already know. I talked about this after um, the, the game in my immediate reaction. Why put your defense, this amount of stress on your defense when you're talking about not running the ball as much? I understand, trust me, I really understand the point of view of keeping Caleb's numbers up there. I want to keep his numbers up there. I want him to be the, whatever it is, since 1948, second man uh, to win the Heisman Trophy, I guess since Archie Griffin. I, 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 think, uh, I think that's when it was. Um, it's, it's been a long, long time. Um, it's, it's a rare thing that happens. It never happens. Um, and Caleb is, I think he has a good shot, good opportunity. But then at, at what risk? At what risk? I'm asking a serious question because by no means, <clears throat> of course, am I questioning um, Caleb because you guys know he had a phenomenal day. Um, he's he's excellent, excellent like he always is. He, he moves and grooves like he always does. But then at some point, as the head coach, I want to ask a serious question. Do you think we need to take control of the clock, of the running game, and, and try to <clears throat> keep our players? If we know that the altitude is crazy. I mean, to me, it's like you saw our defense getting tired, right? We saw them wearing down. And I don't believe it's because Colorado overpowered us. I simply believe it's because of, um, okay, one can question the scheme. But then the other aspect of it uh, is that a lot of guys don't think about is they're running the quick tempo, RPO, whatever offense, uh, uh, mesh plays or whatever, and they, they're getting right up to the line. Our defense was getting absolutely gassed. And if our defense was getting gassed, and you know this is having a, you know, a, a big-time effect, instead of trying to look at getting numbers, instead of getting a wow factor, why not, why not run the ball? And control the clock. That's the question I have. I need you guys to hit me in the comments. I need you guys to let me know. What are your thoughts? Um, do you think we did a good job on managing the clock? Because I always feel like this as well. A lot of the blame, it always goes on Alex Grinch. The whole country right now is talking about Alex Grinch. Okay, I'll give you that. <clears throat> but I want to look at another piece to this. And I want to know from you guys in the comment section, can some of that blame be split when you're talking about um, these guys being gassed. I told you guys, and uh, and I believe that these guys, the defensive line, did a phenomenal job. They did some of the, some great things. You still had Jamil Muhammad. You still had Solomon Burr. You still had these guys that were still making sacks. They're still playing. And Bear Alexander, Keon Bars. I've seen these guys rotating out. Um, I think they did a phenomenal job. But the level of stress that was put on that defense for constantly being on the field, am I blaming the offense? Absolutely not. But am I wondering about the play calling? Yes, I am. Because I want to know from you guys in the comment section, do you think it needs to be another approach um, when you're looking at it from that perspective, especially given the environment that we were in? So you guys hit me in the comments on that. that that's one particular thing that I wanted to bring you. And also, I want to look at the AP poll and – I want to listen to something that Bryson Shaw said. He is taking accountability. And shout out to Bryson Shaw. Um, I talked to, I, I not called him out, but I did say that, talked about how he had those um, catches that were thrown on him 
he took accountability for some of the things that took place on Saturday. And look, shout out to him for saying that. He even said, look, he said, it's not on Coach Grinch. He said, Coach Grinch, and I've told you guys this plenty of times, but I, I know everybody, I, it's hard for me to defend. After what happened on Saturday, I can't defend it. I can't even say that Grinch is putting everybody in the right place, even though I know that um, at times he is. Because even as Bryson Shaw alluded to, he said that we're the ones that's missing tackles. We're the one that's being put in place. He said, we can't put this on anybody. And I, I see the same thing at times. I, I see that uh, sometimes that guys are, are in the place, but they're not tackling. And that, that means if you're, in the, if you're missing a guy, if you're not tackling the guy, that means that you're in the right place. Um, however, there were some questionable times when you've seen that big gaping hole with Shador Sanders, uh, who is not that, not that fast. <laughs> and there was somebody that hit me in the comments and said, Jay, Shador runs about a 4-6, and I seriously doubt that. You guys already know, Jay Walk was on here, said he suggests that he may probably run about a 4-8. That's not just saying that you're slow, but that's just saying that you're not going to be one of the fastest guys at a 4-6 or 4-5 running in the 40. And that whole, it, it, that thing really just kind of, it was so big to where a guy that runs a 4-8 possibly, um, and, and this is, look, whoever hears this, is no knock on Shador. That dude is an NFL star. He's an NFL quarterback. He can get the ball. He can put the ball. In fact, when I went back and looked at it, the ball that he placed between Caleb Bullock and Bryson Shaw, um, that ball was placed perfectly. I mean, I don't even know how those guys – I mean, it, it was absolutely put per, placed perfectly. But, uh, but he's just not a guy that's just going to slice you up in the running. But the hole was so big, that was a question to my point. That was a very, very, very – questionable call. I don't know what defense that was that was called at that time. So to that point, that's an Alex Grinch issue. I don't, I mean, that was the biggest hole that I've ever seen ever. I mean, it, you just couldn't even see players on the left or the right. All you could see is field in the end zone. And so to me, that was a, a, a terrible defensive call when I look at it from that perspective. So I, I really try to put all the pieces into play. I put all the pieces together. Um, I don't put I don't I don't look at this thing from a, a the proper lens. I don't listen to outside influences. I create my own inf uh, influence and my own thoughts and generate my own ideas and my own thoughts and I put it all together and I come up with what I see, which is I see issues on on the defense as that's causing issues. Oh, well, I see issues on the uh, the play calling that's causing issues on the defense. Um, is, is that to say that the defense is called right? No, but I just think that. It can be controlled a little bit better if you know we have issues. If you want to save your friend, and let me say it like that, um, from getting some of the criticism, which is Alex Grinch. Save some of the criticism by establish, keeping your defense off the field so that we won't have to hear this from the media. Because right now, you guys already know, I've been one of the biggest supporters of USC football, and I still am. One of the biggest supporters of this defense, and I still am. Because I believe in each and every one of these guys on the field. I, I still do, and I believe, I still believe in, believe it or not, I believe in Alex Grinch, the same way as Bryson Shaw, but I believe this thing got to come together some way, somehow, even if you got to somewhat change the scheme, um, or, or different plays, I mean, you got, we got Greg Brown there, somebody has to make some type of, they have to implement some type of uh, uh, different play calling, different scheme at different times to make this thing effective because we got some guys that are coming up. We got Notre Dame coming up. We got Utah coming up, which I'm not really concerned about. They're at home. We got Washington coming up, which I'm really not even concerned about them when you look at what they did against Arizona yesterday. I'm not concerned about them um, as much as at Oregon. We have to have sound play calling because my thing is if, if, we, have, if we play like the way we played yesterday um, against Oregon, uh, scoring a lot of points, but the holes that were open, I mean, the defensive breakdowns, if we play like that with the crowd that's going to be even a lot more hostile um, against Oregon, we could be absolutely lost in the sauce. And that alone right there makes me, makes me uh, terrified. So, look, man, you guys hit me in the comments. I'm going to take a look so, real quick at some of this AP poll stuff, man. And uh, you guys hit me in the comments and you guys tell me what you think. But let's real quick, before we look at the AP poll, I want you guys to uh, – Listen to some things real quick that Bryson Shaw had to say. Let's take a look at that real quick. Let's go. Here is the AP poll, and I, I decided to do this first, and then we'll get into the Bryson Shaw situation. But the, the, the AP pro is absolutely, um, I believe, lost in the sauce. I don't care 
um, how our defense performed. Yes, we performed bad, but but look at some other teams. I, I need you guys to really understand what's taking place. Of course, Georgia, they, they're going to continue to have them at number one. And you look at – they lost. They almost, I was watching that game. They almost lost against Auburn. It was very, very close. They lost by seven points. Uh, excuse me. They won by seven points. Georgia wins by seven points, and they still get to be at number one. They yet to have any type of drop um, in the poll. I mean, it just continues to. And then you look at Michigan, number two, uh, Texas, number three. I have no problem with those. Ohio State, four. Um, I have no problem with that. And then Florida State, they're, su they're suspect because when they played Boston College at Boston College, uh, Boston College, excuse me for my screen, Boston College, who really isn't that good of a, a team, um, they struggle with them. But Florida State continues to stay around. You know, they had them ranked as high as number three, I believe, number three or four, and they still continue to be within the top five. Um, you know, Penn State, they, they blew out yesterday. They blew out Northwestern. But then you come down here to Washington. Washington played or Arizona, Arizona yesterday, uh, and they won by seven points, 31 to 24. So, I mean, you guys hit me in the comments. Why does Washington get the love? We played in the away game as well. Um, we won, We lost by eight points. I don't care. You can say whatever you want to say about the defense, but at the end of the day, there is a certain bias because you look at here, uh, they got Oregon number eight, and then you got USC number nine, uh, and then you're going to have Notre Dame number 10, and then number 11, number uh, Alabama, Oklahoma 12, Washington State 13, uh, 14 is going to be North Carolina, 15, Oregon State, and then you're going to have Ole Miss, uh, 16, 17, Miami, Utah, 18, Duke, 19, Kentucky, 20, 21, Missouri, and then 22 is going to be Tennessee, which is, I mean, they got blown out by, they got to have all the, it's amazing because now when you look at it, they got, the SEC has the most teams in there now. And that's because that's because they, they still want to you, – you're telling me that LSU – look at Tennessee number 22. LSU has two losses on their schedule now. They lost against Ole Miss. They lost against Florida State. And now LSU gets an opportunity to still be in the top 25. Are you serious? There's, there's other teams that can be um, – that can compete at this level – and be a top 25 team, and why does LSU still get the opportunity to be in there? I, I mean, this is really – I mean, this just shows you how biased the situation is with the AP. It's crazy. Uh, Fresno State 24 and then Louisville 25, man. So, man, you guys can hit me in the comments. You can give me your thoughts on this AP poll. I think it absolutely sucks. I don't care if we if we won by eight points or not at Colorado. Colorado did go in there and beat TCU, uh, which TCU still – look, TCU is a power five school. I didn't think – look, I thought we were going to blow Colorado out, but it, it didn't happen. But at the end of the day, we still beat them on their field. And, um, you know, TCU is a 3-2 and two team. And it's not like they're just, they're just a team. And they did play in the national championship last year. So, you know, I mean, hey, look, we can say whatever we want to say about it. Um, I, I think that this thing is really beyond bias right now. And they continue to move and grow. But as I told you guys, and I stated this before, USC has to go – Above and beyond, they have to go way more than anybody else in order. And, and I hope our team is looking at this. I hope they understand that, look, they're not going to give you anything. They're not going to give you an inch. They're not going to give you a foot. They're not going to give you a yard. They're not giving you anything. You're going to have to go out there and get it. You're going to have to prove it on the field. You're going to have to show it on the field because what they've seen on Saturday, um, it, it's, it's unacceptable in everybody's eyes. And, you know, I, I just think that, this is the result of that being moved down to number nine. Look, so you guys can hit me in the comments. You can tell me what you think. Um, this is the top 25 AP. Um, I want to take a look real quick at some things uh, Bryson Shaw said as it relates to uh, uh, what they had going on Saturday and how he puts Gibbs Grinch. Uh, he doesn't he doesn't put anything on Grinch. I want you guys to take a listen to this. So here's Bryson Shaw. I want you guys to hear. It. Let me know your thoughts on this um, as it relates to Alex. Yeah, uh, we played hard, but definitely not to our standard. Uh, but, uh, you know, we can learn from this. We need to learn from this. We need to fix it. But uh, unacceptable, well, unacceptable individually and uh, as a unit. And um, we'll go back to the film, watch it, and we'll get it fixed. And uh, 
we need to get it fixed. It's, it's embarrassing. What specifically do you, do you think you guys need to get fixed? I mean, just everything. But the, the Coach Chris, is, is, he's doing a great job. I mean, it, we're letting him down. That's that's point blank period. We're letting him down. Like, I don't know what to tell you. We're, as players, we're letting him down. I mean, he's putting us in the right spot. We're not making plays. We're missing tackles. We're not doing our job. I'm not doing my job. We're letting him down. We're letting him down. Bryson, what did Colorado do differently in the second half that – Gave them some success. Yeah, I mean, credit to them. They did, they did a good job, but uh, we just got to do our job. You know, we just got to execute the call. We didn't execute the call. You know, the times are lazy getting lined up. All right, so that was Bryson Shaw, man. You guys hear it from yourself out of his mouth. And uh, look, man, hey, big up to him. Big props to him for uh, taking ownership and taking accountability. And look, here, here's what I'm going to say, and I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to say this. Sometime, you know, we, yes, we experienced this. I felt like this was the Tulane game all over again. Um, I felt like this was, uh, I mean, some of last year's all over again. But at the end of the day, when I think about some aspects, some parts of last year, I think about games like Oregon State. Um, I think about where the offense seemed to struggle and we faced a better defense. And I, I think about the fact that USC, um, for whatever reason, whatever calls that were being in place, I know it was the same scheme. I think about the defense absolutely tightened up and held Oregon State to, what, 14 points. We won the game. 14 to 17 and I think USC was able to just really show they were able to flex their muscle on defense We've seen something we've seen uh, some talent. We've seen some potential and we also seen it last year during the Notre Dame game um, When that the running back that they have now um, estimate We absolutely held him to I believe 95 yards last year um, We got to ask ourselves this why were we able to do that? What about the scheme? What about? The execution, were we able to do that? Um, why did it happen? And so I'm saying to myself this. I got some positive things that I could take away from this. And the positive is this, that if we could do it in those games last year, um, if we could do it in, because I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'm trying to remember, uh, we came off an Arizona game, which was absolutely wild. Let me look at the schedule. We came off an Arizona game, I believe, that was uh, absolutely just wild. And I believe we played Utah. Um, uh, Oregon State. Let me let me see. Let me see. USC versus Oregon State, and this was last year. Now I'm trying to. We won 17 to 14, but I'm trying to remember what game was before that. Uh, it was the Fresno State game, and then we played Arizona State. Well, we we gave up 28 points last year to Stanford, then Fresno State 17, and then Oregon State. So in, in last year, that Fresno State was actually a pretty decent team. And my thing is this. If we could tighten up the defense last year, we had better times last year than it seems like this year. If you look at it from the beginning, looking at the Fresno State, 17 points, uh, gave them 17 points. We won that game 45-17. to 17. We beat Stanford 41-28 to 28 last year. And, of course, the Rice game. But then after that, Arizona State 42-25. to 25. And then last year, Washington State, 30-14, to 14, we held a decent Washington State who beat Wisconsin last year as well, held them to 14 points. And if you look at this, and then that's when it started changing up a little bit when we started playing Utah and then Arizona. So my thing is this. If we could have some bright spots last year, and I, I, I just really believe in my heart, um, because here's, here's the thing I'm going to tell you guys right now. Because Lincoln Riley, he absolutely defended Alex Grinch. And I'm, I'm going to tell you this. It's not going anywhere. So you, so the best thing for us to do right now at this point is, look, jump on board or you can get off board. Jump on board or get off board. I'm, I'm staying on board no matter what. I don't care if we if, – even if we lost coach to Lincoln Riley, I'm on board. So – my thing is this. I was on board with Hilton. I was on board before. I mean, I was on board with Kiffin. I was on board with Sark. I, you know, I, I was I was born on board. So my thing is this. We could either get, get off board or we could stick with the team or you could stop supporting the team until they get another defensive coordinator. But you know what? I'm, st I'm, I'm staying on board no matter what. I'm supporting them. I love these guys. I believe that USC can have bright spots. I believe in our defensive line. Uh, Coach Sean Nua. I believe in uh, Odom. I believe in all these guys that are, you know, the, these coaches that are supporting staff. And um, I, I think that there is an opportunity that we can absolutely learn from this, man. If, if, if there's no other thing, if you heard it in Bryson Shaw's voice, um, USC can learn from this and pick up the pieces and, look, execute, and coaches as well, adjust some type of scheme 
whatever you got to do. Because right now, we got to understand, Caleb Williams is on this team, and this is his last year. And I think at this point, it's going to be playoff or bust. I mean, that's the bottom line. We're, we are in a uh, – we have to draw the line in the sand right now, and it's going to be playoff or bust. So, look, man, I'm out of here. You, I'm going to stop rambling, but ratting. But you guys can hit me in the comments. You guys can tell me what you think. You guys already know where you can find me. It's going to be USCJ32 on Instagram, USCJ32 on Twitter. Until later on, everybody stay blessed. Fight on, fight on, fight on.